Welcome to the Thought Leader Podcast. Get ready to hear powerful stories, unique perspectives, and bright ideas to impact the world in the areas of health, wealth, and relationships. We interview experts, authors, executives, entrepreneurs, and other industry thought leaders who share new strategies, practical tools, and best practices to accelerate your personal and professional results. This is the Thought Leader Podcast. And now, here's your host, Elena Fernandez. Well, hello, Thought Leaders, and welcome back. And today, I am so excited because we have Ali Born Vanek today. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a treat because we're going to talk about a very, very essential topic, and she's going to take us through her journey. And I'm so excited about it because I know a little bit, a little bit about what she's talking about. So let's talk about you as a thought leader. What does being a thought leader mean to you, Ali? Oh my gosh, it is, it blows my mind. <laughs> it, 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 it really does. And with that, so much gratitude. I, I just, I feel so, so honored and humbled to have my name and the phrase thought leader be in the same sentence. I, I really do. And thank you so much for having me um, be able to speak and um, and share. This is truly, truly wonderful. Um, it also comes with responsibility because we want to share the best we can from a heart-centered space and make an impact. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you said that because the impact that you've been making as a an award-winning television journalist, an entrepreneur, college golfer, and Miss Virgin Islands. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We were also in Miss America. So this is incredible. Um, I really love the impact that you've you've made in all those roles and and now you're the host and, and creator of the travel show but tell us about that a little bit just because i i'm curious yeah yeah no absolutely thank you so much for asking me about that um you know i right now i am the the host and creator of a caribbean travel show it's called vi tanks um, i'm from the u.s virgin islands and so you know down here you know it's you know my show covers people, places, and things. You know, the culture is so unique and it's so rich. It's my culture. Um, I love it. And what I love most about it is just being able to share the best of the, of the USBI to mm -hmm. a greater audience. Um, my show airs locally on different network affiliates and then also on the Channel One Caribbean television, uh, which you can see in the Caribbean and also in different markets in the US. So it has that that reach. And yeah, I just, I just, I, I love being a Virgin Islander. I love being able to share home, carnival, food, Johnny Cake. I mean, just <laughs> all the different, all the different things that were normal for me growing up. But you know, to to someone who isn't as familiar, it might seem like, wow, that's that's really cool or that's really different. Um I love the dance too. So yeah, carnival is one of my favorite things to to to, to bring the sparkly mm -hmm. costumes. And, and I think, it, you know, when I look back on my whole career um, as a journalist, and I'm, I, I'm so grateful for it. I mean, the, the ups and downs, it's all a part of the journey. Being a, a local TV reporter, um, I, I say anywhere in the States um, and in the world, sometimes you're covering the hardest stories. Um, you know, the ones that you truly want to cry in, but you need to stay strong for the story. Um, so having, you know, over 10 years as a local news reporter and then taking a step back from that and saying, okay, I'm ready to cover something cool, informative, fun, upbeat, and and just and, and bring it, you know? So that's mm. that's part of the really, um, that's the joy that I have with it. Mm, I love that. And, and it sounds a lot like you are always reinventing yourself, which is something that I admire from you because now you have this new passion and you call it spilling the sobriety, yes. <laughs> which, which is brilliant. 
<laughs> when I, I never first heard you, me. yes, when I first heard you talk about it, I was like, oh my goodness, this is brilliant, brilliant branding. And uh, tell us why you became passionate about this and your story that led to this YouTube channel and your speaking around the world and to many audiences about this topic. Yeah, yeah. You know, spilling the sobriety has been something within my heart that I've want I've wanted to share for a while. Um, I've been I've wanted to share my journey of sobriety for the last six years that um, I've been sober. But I truly felt that you know, higher power, you know, spiritually and everything that it was really the last six years has been about just really uh, sinking into my sober journey rediscovering different parts of me and really cementing it in a way because I always knew I wanted to share it, but I wanted to make sure that I was ready and that I went through all the ups and downs and, you know, twists and turns and everything. And, and it, it will always continue, right? That's part of the beauty of the journey. But right now uh, I felt that this was, this was the time, this was a time to share um, because I have so much gratitude for my sobriety journey you know, it started six years ago, uh, back in 2017. I was I was 34, and you know, it it didn't it it it, it was a it was a slow burning cha chaotic uh, rock bottom that that happened. If I, you know, for lack of better words, um, in short, you know, I had a it started with a head injury. I was actually playing volleyball with my church group <laughs> at the time. And, and it's okay, Alina, if you want to laugh, because I think, you know, anybody would probably laugh when I say this, but yeah, I got hit in the head with a volleyball <laughs> and I got a concussion. Okay. I only, I only laugh because I can relate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, and so, you know, I went to the hospital, I got the, the, the CAT scan. Uh, it was, it was pretty, it, it was pretty scary in the moment. I can mm. laugh about it now, but I mean, at the time, you know, I, my whole face was, was burning. The back of my neck was burning. I was having these pounding headaches and thankfully I'm not one to, to get headaches or migraines usually. So I knew that this wasn't normal for me mm -hmm. at the time. The doctor said, Hey, you know, maybe two or three weeks, this is going to go away and you'll be fine. Um, they gave me some pain medication. So that really started the sobriety journey for me because I was not going to drink at all. Um, you know, when I was on that pain medication. Um, but unfortunately, you know, one month went by, the pain just got worse. I was on stronger medication, two months went by pain. I mean, it was to the point where I, I couldn't drive my car. You know, so I would, I would take the pain medication and then I would just have to lie down and actually on it, it said, do not drive if you, if you take this. Um, mm -hmm. And it was really the only way I could feel relief. And I would have to time out my, my life where, okay, let me try to work in these hours, you know, before the headaches come back and I have to take medication. It truly made everything very chaotic. Um, it got to the point where in September of 2017, I uh, was called into work and unfortunately, you know, they fired me, um, which mm -hmm. was a very hard, um, hard mm -hmm. situation and pill to swallow. I felt like I had tried so hard and they told me it wasn't personal, but you know, I was, I was in a marketing sales position. I wasn't meeting the mark. I mm -hmm. knew that physically I wasn't able to do as much as I had previously been able to do. I got fired. Yeah. Wow. That that sounds like <laughs> a lot to go through in such a short period of time. Yeah. Um, it, it it was it was really rough timing because not only did I have this you know concussion and was fired, the very next day, the most catastrophic worst hurricane at the time in the Atlantic Ocean hit my home island, St. Thomas, mm -hmm. and completely demolished everything. Hurricane Irma on September, I believe it was September 6th. Mm -hmm. So in one day, fired, lost all contact with family, family home, gone. 
um, everybody's home basically gone. And um, I thought to myself, okay, like for the first time in my adult life, I thought to myself, I really don't know what I'm going to do and where I'm going to go at this mm -hmm. point, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it takes me back, but feeling that emotionally and then feeling the headaches physically, mm -hmm. um, knowing that I, my health insurance was going to be cut off. I got, I literally got down on my knees and just cried life. God, like I, you know, that was one of the lowest, we all, you know, I never wished rock bottoms on anyone, but we all can relate, I think, to these dark nights of the soul yes. where we're just thinking, what, what to do? Um, and it's a very, very scary place. Um, and as I say this, I want to share my heart and prayers to anybody who is in a position where they are going through a dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. They are at rock bottom. And I just want to say, I, I am with you and that it will get better, you know, it, it, it will, and keep the faith. I know that's easy for me to say, but I'll tell you what, that moment, Alina, really changed my life. You know, mm -hmm. I, I remember I got up and I just thought to myself, okay, what's the next best thing to do? You know, let me try to call family again, see if a cell phone signal goes through. Let me try to look for a new job. I mean, it was, it was just moving, sometimes the action of moving forward Mm. helps you move forward out of whatever it is that you're doing. It could be a small thing, but I just said to myself, okay, next best thing, what do I got to do in these next 15 minutes? And I'll tell you, God is so good because a week after that moment, I went to a physical therapist who I'd been on the waiting list for concussions mm. were gone. They were complete. I mean, it was, it was the most powerful, I had, I had very low expectations going into this just because of everything. Wow. The, the con these debilitating concussions were gone. Um, I felt fluid drain from like head to toe. It was, it was the most, it, it, it was the most profound experience I had ever had in a doctor's office in that kind of setting. I was crying, like just from the reaction of all of the pressure being released and, they were so kind to me and they told me, don't worry about, you know, looking crazy. <laughs> it's like tears are <laughs> coming down me. I, I kept on saying, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm crying. I'm like, I don't know why my body is doing this. This was yeah. part of that whole reaction. But I'll never forget. And this is where I'm to, to bring it all back around. I walked out of that office. I sat in my car and I just, you know, tears still streaming down my face. And I really felt call it guardian angels, call it a higher power. I mean, I believe in both the universe. I just heard soft whispers say, don't drink. Do wow. not, don't drink. It, I, it was a soft whisper. I mean, I say whisper, it, 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 it was audible and it wasn't. You mm -hmm. know, I think we all sometimes have these moments in life where we just, we feel maybe that inner epiphany. And I do feel it's a, it's a, a, a spiritual space that's giving us a message. Yeah. And I just, I just thought, okay, okay. And that really began, I think that spiritual aspect of, of sobriety and the beginning of a journey for me to truly reflect on my life prior to that concussion and take ownership of where I had gotten into life, which, you know, I had accomplished a lot, a lot at the time and so much gratitude for it. But where was I holding myself back? Where was I letting alcohol self-sabotage? Mm -hmm. A lot of these dreams that I had, partnership, marriage, children, you know, giving back to the world in, in, a, in a bigger way. Where was I letting alcohol slow me down in that? And I realized, yeah, you know, maybe nobody in my life at that point had said, whoa, Ali, you got to stop drinking. Right. But I knew in my heart that I wasn't being responsible. I knew that I was a single woman at home having half a bottle of wine, you know, for dinner just so that I could numb the pain of being single. Right. And just pass out, you know, you know, that's mm -hmm. um, that's a real thing. And, I, you know, I again, just so much love to anybody who has ever been there or even if you are there now, like um, I take ownership of that. 
you know, I truly do. And um, sobriety at that point was a way, you know, I said to myself, okay, like, what is the purpose? And that's what I talk about in my, on my YouTube channel, spilling the sobriety, you know, when you're in that early sobriety, it's so important to understand what is your purpose? What is this for? Mm -hmm. You know, because when you have that, 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 that huge messaging that comes to you to do something, you want it to be rooted. Yeah. You want to follow through with it. Cause you know that like, that's it. You really need to. And for me, it was literally to, to focus and not have my life be chaotic. Wow. Um, you know, I, I, I should add to that the, the concussions leaving or finding healing for my concussions a week after that rock bottom moment, that wasn't the only miracle that happened to me. Mm. Um, the The second miracle was getting a new job. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> and that I know. <laughs> Take <it on. laughs> okay, because I tell you, I, I I I honestly thought, man, I'm gonna have to pack up my whole car and just drive. Yeah. Somewhere, you know? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I was just waiting for that because it's like, oh my goodness, what happened to your home? Did you find a job? Like I have all these questions now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I was, I was renting um, an apartment um, at the time, but you know, to, to your note, what, uh, what you just said. Yeah. I, before I got that job, I thought to myself, I'm going to have to just pack up anything I can in my car. Mm -hmm. and drive somewhere I had never faced that you know prospect mm -hmm. but but yes like a, a week later I got a new job it was going to pay me even more money mm -hmm. and it was truly in it, it wasn't you know it, it was it was going to be in a way where I could focus on video um, film travel and then also get get back to the virgin islands and help out with hurricane relief and, wow. and make a difference there and i i feel like that was the biggest thing for me really like i sitting in that apartment you know before going to physical therapy sitting in that apartment i just wanted to go back home and make a difference yeah i wanted to i wanted to whatever it was pass out ice help you mm -hmm. know you know, help. I mean, literally, if I had to grab a machete and cut, cut bush, <laughs> bush and ting to help people out, like that's that's what was going on. You know, yeah, um, yeah. And I can I can relate. I mean, I my family uh, lives in the Caribbean, and I'm from the Caribbean, a different island. <laughs> yes, beautiful Dominican Republic. <laughs> yes, and and so yeah that that emptiness of being alone i think we can all relate to that missing our loved ones um and and wanting to help i know a lot of people go through that even when it's a different state or a different city and uh and a different country is that you know at another level of that but i think when you're talking about that dark night of the soul and the pain of being single, and then the pain of feeling helpless, like you can't really make a difference for others. Though Those are really real and valid moments for all of us, no matter where they come from or how they show up. So thank you for speaking about that. And and now you, you've made me very curious because you're your way of finding sobriety was so appointed, so, you know, so, so spiritual. And so for some people, it, it's, it doesn't start that way. Um, and so I would like to know for you what your early sobriety was like and, and how you navigated wanting to drink, but also is that typical? How does that show up? Did it show up for you because you had this epiphany and this spiritual awakening versus how it shows up for someone else who maybe has had an intervention or has come to a different type of rock bottom that involved, you know, not being sober? Absolutely. Sobriety and the journey of sobriety will land differently for for everybody. You know, I um, I have family members where there has been that intervention, uh, and their sobriety journey was 
a thousand percent different than than mine. Um, yet the result of not drinking kind of stays the same. Uh, for for me, early sobriety did have some tough moments in it. My my habits of using alcohol as a crutch in social situations, using it to um, self medicate and numb pain, emotional pain that I was thinking, those things did not go away overnight at all. Um, and just wanting to feel like, hey, like I'm with friends and people and, you know, I'm, I'm able to be a part of that, not feel FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> to not, not have to feel that. It was, what it was, Alina, was it was recreating a, a whole new lifestyle for myself, mm. you know, mind, body, and spirit. And that takes time. That takes a lot of growing pains. Um, you know, I think in life when we are going to the next level or we are truly transforming our life, be it maybe it's a it's a healthy weight loss journey that somebody may be beginning, maybe it's sobriety, maybe it's you know, do exercise or whatever it is, there are going to be some super tough moments where you're going to think I can't do this, or you may just want to give up. Right. And, and, and so for me, I had a lot of those moments. Like I always knew that, yes, I was sobriety. I wanted to stay sober, but that still didn't change a lot of that, you know, moments of the heart, the human emotions, the angst, the heartache, the mourning of my old life, Right. Where maybe I'd be dancing, you know, drinking and you know, all, all of this stuff. And um, that that was gone. Really. I mean, I mean, the drinking part was wrong. I'm still dancing. But the, the drinking part was was gone. Right. And you have to get used to that. Also, I will say that socially it was difficult, too. I, I felt that my social life was changing, wasn't really getting the that I was not getting the happy hour invites, yeah. you know, as I, as I had before, but, you know, I will, for me, just a quick note on that for anybody who may be experiencing that uh, sobriety really has a way of cutting through the fat. That's how I felt. It was just tr true alignment into yourself and in your heart and who you are. And, you know, those who are I feel supposed to be in my journey in life, like they're here. Um, and if they maybe, you know, fell off a little um, because my, our lifestyles didn't align um, anymore, that's okay. You know, people are great. You know, people can go in their direction. I can go in mine. Um, uh, the, the tough parts of sobriety um, were difficult. And what I found that helped for me are different tools that I talk about on my channel of spilling the sobriety. And a lot of that came down to, again, knowing what my purpose was in it and having that root me. And then also planning my day. Mm. You know, that, you know, when I was drinking, I was not doing that really. I really and truly wasn't doing that to the extent that I did when I fell into my sobriety journey. Um, the reason why it's so important to plan your day is because what you got to remember is, you know, the way your life was before, um, had you fall into different traps, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going home, I was bored, I was starting to feel sad about being single and being, you know, quote unquote, alone, you're never really alone, but feeling like, you know, you're alone in the world. Um, planning my day. Now I had different things to do at night, read a book, journal, have a fun movie to watch, make a fun meal, phone a friend, <laughs> you know, different, different. I had like, I had a carousel of different things to do. And the times where, you know, I went through all of those things and I still felt, man, like, um, and I'm thinking, gosh, I, I normally I would have a glass of wine. You know, this would be really good to have. I would I would phone a friend or I would text or phone a friend and say, hey, can we meet up like tomorrow, and grab coffee or something? Um, because I, I realized that the loneliness, it's only it's only temporary. Right. But if my mind knew that, OK, maybe I'm feeling a little sad now. 
but I have a really fun coffee date lined up tomorrow. I get to talk to a girlfriend or you know whoever it is. Yeah. It would alleviate feeling lonely in that way. So, but that came to planning my day. I knew from okay. the what in early sobriety, I knew before I left, you know, be, to begin the day, I knew what I was doing at night. You know, I wouldn't have to worry about that um, as much. And I will say that once you move out of early sobriety, I think these are still good things to do and have, but, you know, you might feel a little more uh, mature and cemented in your sobriety journey. So it may not have to be as, as rigid or, you know, mm. as, um, but, but yeah, that truly helped. Um, and I will also say, you know, in early sobriety, it's important, I think, to confide in people who you trust for me. And I, I should say I'm not a sobriety expert, right? Or a or or a or a trained professional. Um, so this this comes from my own experience. I felt that, you know, rather than blast on social media, tell the whole world, you know, you're not drinking, or you know, just tell a few people who you trust, mm. a few family members and friends, you know, and and really just just sink into that, um, because they can when when they know. When you know that somebody else knows you're no longer drinking, it changes the game. It's not just your own little secret, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody else knows. And that gives you strength. You know, they can be there as, you know, a listening ear, you know, healthy boundaries, of course, but they can be there for support in, in different ways as you begin to grow and sink into the whole process. Wow, that's so powerful, Ali. And I'm so grateful that you generously, you know, really shared your entire journey and this fabulous tips that, like you said, come from your experience. And, and yet sometimes we underestimate our lived experience and, and how much expertise there is in there. That's why you're a thought leader, because you have this powerful way of of sharing your perspective and I really appreciate that and I'm sure the listeners appreciate it because even you know those people who don't have this experience with alcohol with wine specifically we can all identify something that we can be sober from and uh, I actually have always been sober, but I can relate to the social interactions and how yeah. they are so different for people who, you know, they're drinking together and I'm not drinking or how you're excluded. And so I really appreciate it when you shared with us that there are ways to to understand this differently, like you're cutting out the fat. I love that. And uh, planning your day. Wow. Really love how intentional you are in this process. And I think that, that that's something that I wanted to highlight, how this is all about really being intentional and planning this out. You said, tomorrow I have a fun day with my friend. And it's like, wow. So you really are... Um, taking all of those objections or or the things that the voices in your head were telling you and finding ways to really find evidence in the physical world that that's not the truth. You're not lonely. You're not, you know, you can do this uh, and having support. Uh, really, really key. Really love everything that you're sharing. And and I'm really excited to to ask you a little more. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you, God. You've been listening to the Thought Leader Podcast at Thought Leader. We help experts, authors, executives, and entrepreneurs land the most credible and authority building stages in the world to spread their message and their impact. If that's you, visit thought leader.com and click on schedule a session to get started. Now back to this episode of the Thought Leader Podcast. Again, thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be able to share these lived experiences. And I reached a point where I just said, I got to really take ownership. 
of of everything. You know, there's a there's a a, a saying or a, a a catchphrase. I didn't come up with it, but it goes: if you are pointing the finger, I don't want to point at you. <laughs> but it's like you got you got you got three fingers pointing right back at you. And I I I really take that to heart in in life. And I think with those three fingers pointing back at me, um, and back to that moment in the car after. You know, feeling the healing of that concussion and hearing don't drink. It was truly one of the best things I can say that has ever happened to me in my life. Um, yeah. it, it just brought me to that point of cutting the fat, understanding that I'm not alone. And yes, we may have these feelings. It's normal. What am I doing to be proactive about that? And as I moved in my sobriety journey, especially in that early part, something else that I, I really reflected on that helped ground me in my sobriety journey. And I, I don't think I've, I've shared this yet on my channel, but I asked myself three questions as I was going through that early sobriety. I said, did alcohol make me money, right? Did alcohol make me a richer person? <laughs> the answer was no. And I thought, did alcohol help me get my dream career? Did it help me move forward in my professional life? And the answer was no, a <laughs> big fat no. And then I thought, did alcohol help me find the love of my life? Mm. Again, no. And, and granted, and, may, and maybe those three questions, you know, I, I don't know if that translates, you know, the same to other people, but for me, 34 single, life had just been very chaotic. Now life was coming back into um, focus, it was coming back. And I was now moving up, I felt, in a, in a mm -hmm. healthier structure, more balanced way. Um, it just seemed very clear to me. Um, I think that more and more when I do talk to people about sobriety and everything, more people are sharing how, you know, yeah, when they cut alcohol out of their life, you know, you can get more of this razor sharp focus yeah. and move forward in a lot of things. This doesn't mean alcohol is bad. I, I truly feel, you know, everybody has a right to live their life as, as they want to live it and, you know, understand what works best for them. But mm -hmm. I'm finding in just my conversations with people, men and women, that if you, if you can truly focus and create again, that razor sharp focus in your life and move forward in a way that you really want to, your life can catapult yeah. so much faster than, than it had been. You know, I'll, I'll say now, like now, six years later, I, I am living a life that yes, it has its stressful moments as an entrepreneur, <laughs> but Alina, I'll tell you, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for my sobriety and focusing. Um, I have a, 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 a television show in the Virgin Islands and Caribbean that's on three network affiliate channels. This has been a long time dream. I went from news reporter to having my own TV show. And, you know, and that's, I, I was able to focus and do it. And, and I don't think if it wasn't for the lifestyle that I live, I wouldn't be able to have pulled everything together, um, mm -hmm. you know, in that journey. Um, I also have an incredible partner um, in my life who um, who also doesn't drink. I know I'm going to cry, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, you know that 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 uh, he is an incredible man. Um, he's so smart, so phenomenal, and you know, I'm just so grateful to have a, a journey with him, and. Um, and, and have fun sober. Actually, I, I just like a quick little side note. Um, this is to anybody um, who may have been like me, where in the early sobriety journey, I, cause I definitely thought to myself, will I ever find love? Like if I'm not, you know, going on a date and ordering a drink with somebody, you know, cause you think most adults want to have a drink, you know, like these are things that we tell ourselves. And I thought, man, like, how am I going to, how am I going to find somebody who like, like, it's hard enough finding somebody out here. How am I going to find somebody who like also doesn't drink? Or what if the guy is so incredible, but because I don't drink, 
he's just like, ah, no, nah, like, never mind. Mm -hmm. These were all kind of, I don't want to say lies, but I think as humans, sometimes we let this hamster wheel kind of go on in our head. Yeah. And, and, and these, uh, these things that make us anxious start to become what we think is true. And it's just not true. If you don't drink, that doesn't mean you'll, you, you won't find love. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it doesn't mean somebody's not going to want to be with you because you don't drink. I mean, this is just a little side note, but to anybody out there, if you're in your sobriety journey and you're single and you're thinking about how will you find partnership in this new single lifestyle um, or new um, sober lifestyle, I'm just here to tell you like, so many amazing people out there don't drink. So <laughs> find them, find them, find them. <laughs> I love that so much because when you look at, you know, a movie or or you're out and about, it's like what you see is people say, can I buy you a drink? Yeah. And that's how they approach it. So it's definitely a common belief in, in this culture that, that that's how relationship starts. Um, and so relationships started. <laughs> <laughs> so oh my goodness you're so fun Ali I love talking to you oh my oh, gosh I love talking to you too <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, or tea spill the sobriety tea, right here tea. you know yes absolutely and um you mentioned I want to I want to point back to something you said you said you know that everybody's journey is different and that alcohol is not like the evil of all evils right, and so right. I really love that you said that because I would love for you to talk to us about you know what are the signs that there that alcohol has become a problem that you know how does someone decide that it's time to stop drinking and what are those stigmas that there are about both drinking alcohol and quitting alcohol. Like, I think that there's a lot of stigma around the whole topic and you talk about them so eloquently, I know. So Ali enlightened us with this info. We need it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, to start with, like, what are maybe some of the signs that you should stop drinking? I, I kind of feel like this is me spilling more of the tea. <laughs> it's really more of this of, of the sobriety. Uh, again, you know, for me being at home drinking half a bottle of wine by myself because I was I was sad. I was feeling sorry for myself. Um, that that was a big sign for me. Um, I used to think when I was drinking, I thought of myself as a social drinker. When in fact, I was drinking home alone. That's not a social drinker. You're drinking mm -hmm. by yourself, <laughs> and so I, I would I, I would say for, again from my my own lived experiences, if if you're drinking alone, start to maybe ask yourself, okay, why? Right? Again, it, it's not. I don't want to say that that's a hundred percent red flag, but maybe start that inner dialogue. Maybe even journal it out. Um, why is this? Um, I also, when I reflect back on, on drinking, um, a lot of it just came down to balancing my own emotions. You know, I, alcohol, now when I reflect back uh, to that time, alcohol had my emotions up and down and up and down and feeling bad about this part of my life and this part and not be able to really take action or, or consistent action where I could see a difference, you know, and, and to, to kind of maybe simplify this a little more, I so badly wanted partnership back then. Yeah, I was so, I was so lonely, but it, it felt like between drinking at home and then drinking out with friends and having some pretty interesting drinking experiences <laughs> with friends, one that's called Rosé Gate and involved drinking a lot of rosé in, in a pool, <laughs> like just different, just doing different things and, and not, not really setting myself up in a way where I could focus and, and, and really try to find somebody special in my life, you know? And then, so it, it just really wasn't balanced. Emotions were all over the place. Um, 
I had different projects and things that I wanted to do in my life. Um, and at the time, try to find a new job. I wasn't able to really follow through on that. So if you're out there and you're wondering, you know, should I stop drinking? You know, it comes down to that inner conversation. If you're asking yourself that question, there, like, just personally, there's probably something more behind that. Mm. That's, prob that's probably the start of, of, of you deeply reflecting and figuring it out. And that could be the beginning of your sobriety journey. I will say that a lot of people who I speak to, friends and just, you know, colleagues, contacts out there who are sober have all shared with me that there were moments where they had to kind of ask themselves, should I stop drinking? Mm -hmm. And this is going to land differently for everybody. For me, a lot of it was partnership. You know, that was a big trigger for me. Um, another sign, not being able to go through with projects, right, of maybe, or, or things in life, like trying to, you know, get a new job, get those balls moving forward, so to speak. Um, that, was, that was for me. But if you're out there and you're asking yourself that question, there's probably something behind there. Um, and I feel that that gut instinct really does uh, speak truth to us. Um, I think even before I got hit with that volleyball, if I'm being honest, <laughs> there were moments, actually, I not even think, I know there were moments where I was thinking, man, I, I, I probably need to um, stop doing this, stop doing that when, when it came to drinking. Um, I also want to say this too, because I think this relates um, to the question of the signs. Nobody in life has to necessarily say, you got a problem for you to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. Nobody does. I actually felt when I did stop drinking, I did feel some anxiety because I thought, and this is maybe to the stigma that I'm going to kind of share about um, right now is that nobody had told me, Ali, you should stop drinking. And I thought I was going to be <clears throat> judged in that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not drinking. Like what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> mm. you know? and frankly it ain't, it ain't nobody's business <laughs> you know so you was it was it like if i admit that there's an issue here they'll find out and they haven't even noticed so mm -hmm. something like that was that the feeling yeah yeah it was, wow. it, was it was it was it was feeling like gosh if people if i'm gonna tell because at the time i had only told just a few people who I trusted that I had stopped drinking and some friends who are, you know, who, who continue to stand by my side today. But I was worried about one folks and people out there thinking, Oh, wow. Wait, Ali, Ali had a problem. Ali had, a, had, a, had an issue here. And I was worried about being judged. And then in a strange way, way, Alina, I felt like if I shared with people that I wasn't drinking, that they were going to think that I was judging them for drinking. Yes. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> almost like, oh, Ali, you don't drink? What are you trying to say? Like, I got a problem because I don't, because or be because I drink? Like, it wasn't even. Oh, I can, I can so relate to that. <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes it's being even scary to say I don't drink uh, because it's like, oh, Maybe you think I'm judging you. I can relay a hundred percent. Totally, totally, yeah. yeah. So, so that was that was also a part of my growth in early sobriety that I think many of us go through. Those those you know really getting that courage to speak up. Um, actually, and I mean, you know, in my early sobriety journey, and I wish maybe looking back. I could have said to people, you know, very confidently, hey, I'm not drinking anymore. And I'm talking about like month one, month two. Um, and in, 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 in settings, right? Like, like work, like after hour work settings. I wish I'd had that confidence. What I would tell people in those settings was I'm, I'm, how did I put it? It was, 
something like I'm on a sabbatical with alcohol or I, I found some way to yeah. <laughs> I, I'm on a timeout with alcohol. Like I had, I, 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 I figured out a soft way to put it mm. so that I wouldn't necessarily make people, I was hoping it wouldn't make people feel judged or awkward or, you know, as, as I, you know, stand there with some water or cranberry juice. Yeah. <laughs> everyone had their wine. Um, so, you know, like I said, I wish maybe I'd had the confidence to like straight up be like, nope, quit alcohol, not doing it. But in hindsight, now looking back, I did what I needed to do because in my heart, I knew I wasn't drinking and I wasn't, necess- I was, I was, I was doing the best that I could to manage the moment. And um, I didn't want to feel, I didn't think I was lying or anything. I really was taking a break. It was yeah. just going to be a, li- a lifelong break. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I love how you put it because I think it's intimidating or it can be to come out and say that. And I think that for me, especially when I've been in a setting where people are drinking, I'm okay. K not drinking, but the dread is more like to explain if the the conversation that follows and then it's awkward. So I think that the strategies that you're sharing are just so uh, kind of re- such a relief. They relieve the pressure from having to have that backstory uh, to why you don't drink forever. And so that's that's really powerful. Thank you, Ali. I, I know this is so so helpful and and I'm I'm grateful that you are doing this on your YouTube channel because uh we don't have like forever in this interview but I know that there are so many more resources that you share there and I'm really excited for everyone to visit and and to learn more not only about your journey but also about the strategies and the the tools that you share there for for sobriety. And, and one quick question that I had about that is, do, do you talk to people who are curious about being sober or, you know, not only in the journey uh, to being sober? And do you also talk about, about or to people who want to support the person who's maybe thinking about becoming sober or that have made the decision and have confided in this safe person that you talked about. So who do you speak to in spilling the sobriety so that we know who uh, can tune in? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I, my message is for anyone out there who is thinking about being sober or is early on in their sobriety journey and is, may be struggling because the tools that I share, I think can apply because we, we all have very similar human emotions and, and, and wants and, and hopes and, and, and different heartaches. A lot of this can translate to, to everyone. You know, we all want to feel loved. We all want to feel that acceptance. We all want to feel hope. And that's what my channel stands for. You know, ultimately, it's a way where through my sharing of, you know, the tea and, and everything and tips and tools, I hope that it does provide hope for, for people out there. And to bring it back full circle, I think that's why when I began my sobriety journey six years ago, while I wanted to share about it, I knew it wasn't the time. Because I think now six years later, I can look back and I can see you know, the the toughest moments, times where I truly felt so lonely, even in sobriety, um, to now I can be on my channel and I can share with people, hey, it gets better. Like mm-hmm. here's Alina, here's the here's the wild thing about sobriety that I didn't even realize. It gets better every year. Wow. It 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 gets it gets like if if you've spent, you know, your life drinking, or maybe not whole life, right? But your adult life drinking. And you reach that point where you say, you know what? I'm not drinking anymore. This is my decision. And I know why. Sobriety is going to get better every single year. I have learned so much about myself. 
I truly feel for the first time in my life that not, I mean, since my sobriety journey, I should say, I have never felt more authentic wow. and more in tune with what it is that I want to do and the ability to make that happen. It ain't easy, but I'm actually, I'm doing it. And there's a joy, there's a freedom that comes with all of this. When you feel like you're authentic and you could be with friends and family and joke and be silly and you know that alcohol um, is no longer in your life and, and because of that, it has opened up this whole new realm for you to experience your, your adult life and your authenticity and your freedom. It's like, it's like pop rocks. It's, 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 it gets, it gets so much better. And, um, I've met so many wonderful people in my sobriety journey who, and I'm talking about people in their early twenties who are mm -hmm. like, yep, I quit drinking. Like it, you know, there's actually a very big movement, uh, be it sober curious or just not drinking, especially that we see in Gen Z wow. of people who are, you know, they're just, they're adults, they're out of college and they're not drinking anymore. And they're mm -hmm. finding partners and people who don't drink either. So it's, 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 a, it's a huge, huge growing space. Um, but even aside from, you know, those in their twenties to women in their thirties or even above, it, it's, it's been, it's been truly, truly amazing being able to converse and have different conversations and, you know, talk to women again in their, in their twenties and say, Hey, yeah, like, you know, I, I wish I, I wish in my twenties, I had made that decision because let me tell you it, it is. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Or, mm -hmm. or even, you know, women who have more years of sobriety than me and being able to hear from them and their sacred journeys and being able to think, wow, like, you know, you all are amazing. Like, and I'm, I'm so grateful that I, I found my own sobriety because you all have so much wisdom and, and, and joy and, you know, just everything. It's just that it's, um, it's a really, really great space. And I'm so, I'm so grateful. Uh, it, it does not mean life's perfect in any sort of way at all, but it just means that I feel without a doubt that I'm living my life to the fullest. So amazing. Oof, that's, that gave me chills. So incredible. Just, just beautiful the way that you put it. Um, and so do you, and, and this is a rhetorical question, I think, but do you feel that everyone, when they are able to find that, that place in themselves to, that tells them or whispers to them, like like you said, that they need to be sober or stop drinking as, as you heard that voice. Would it be too pretentious to think like, now you can manifest your dreams. Now you can ah. manifest your life. Now you ah. can be on purpose. That I, Alana, I love that question. Because that is, that's a very, very magical thing you just asked. Um, and that's part of the, the, the magic of sobriety, I feel. Manifestation, and I know there's different schools of thoughts um, on it. Um, I'm very much a big believer in manifestation, the power of it. And here's, the, here's how it relates to sobriety. When we are truly coming from our authentic space, our heart space, that is where we can manifest. That is that is our superpower. Mm -hmm. I will put it like this. When I was drinking, it was like layers on top of me. Layers of programming, layers of what the world wanted me to be, down to how I held a glass of wine, down to how I thought that I needed to be as a woman, how I needed to be out there in social settings, my whole perception of life, once that was removed, and it was just me to see myself or who I am and what I love and etc. That yeah. was when I could say, okay, here's what I really want in life. Here's what is truly in my heart. 
here's where I want to make a difference. And the magnetic part of that is incredible because that's where you really start to see things happening fast, like really, 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 really fast. It doesn't mean that you're on your yoga mat sober and like <laughs> manifest. It, it, it's not that. Okay. It's, it's not <laughs> actually, you know, I, in my own understanding of manifestation, yeah. I was definitely at one point, okay, I'm just going to meditate and manifest. Nope, that's not how <laughs> we all, we all learn how that is, but it, it comes, it comes down to taking action mm. and roll, rolling up our sleeves, taking accountability, saying, okay, wh what do I need to work on? Okay. Cause I know now this is authentically me, right. And I'm ready for it. I'm ready to do universe. I'm ready to do the work. I'm ready to like, take action and make this happen because there are no more distractions, right? <laughs> as far as like the alcohol yeah. goes. Yeah. And I feel this is truly us having conversations with the universe and mm. our, our higher power. When the universe and a higher power sees you taking action in a way, that is your, that is your conversation, right? You, if they're small example, if they see me, right, and they, they do, of course, they're all the time, picking up the phone, trying to, you know, make meetings to create a new television project, um, reaching out to potential advertisers, trying to get a website, it, all of those actions, or even, you know, trying to set up interviews, trying to get new content. For me, you know, in all of that space, that's my conversation to the universe. Like, hey, this is the direction I want to go in. And I know it's coming from my, my, my heart, my whole heart. That's where that manifestation says, okay, Ali's doing this. We're going to open up these doors now. Yeah. We're going to help move these things forward. Or it could be a blog. It could be a podcast. It could be trying to get a new job or maybe a promotion in your current job, you know, doing different things, extra things, having grace, you know, not needing any maybe recognition, but just moving forward and just being the best, you know, team member you can be. Um, yeah. Or in the partnership space, it's putting yourself out there, doing activities out there in the community, or maybe it's, you know, going, going to the apps, but knowing what you want and not settling, right? Mm. Or, you know, like if you're, if you're sober and you know you want a partner who doesn't drink, make not, you know, staying, staying in line with that because you've identified that's really what's best for you. No problem to anybody who does drink. It's just, we all have, um, you know, different, different things that we want in ways we want to live. Mm -hmm. um, and so the universe seeing you take action in whatever it is that you're doing is, is going to converse back in opening doors and the universe might even close some doors too that might be hard to understand at first, but you will in time see that it, that it was doing you a favor by closing mm -hmm. that door and not letting that happen. Um, I know I've experienced that a big way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's um, manifestation and sobriety. They like they like go hand in hand. I, I, I that's kind of a, another another like sober secret, if you will, that, yeah. uh, you know, it's and I've heard this from so many people as well. I mean, from my friends who are artists to, you know, getting huge contracts or having like an art exhibit, you know, just opportunity open up, wow. you know, it's like all of these different things or, you know, that that a uh, project that's going to take you to Greece or something <laughs> that, you know, for, for work, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so um, it's to the point sometimes. And I mean, it, 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 it's not like raining, you know, <laughs> manifestations every day or all, you know, 24 seven, but it's funny because some of these manifestations are a little retroactive, like mm -hmm. something that maybe you wanted three years ago, all of a sudden, like, Oh, wow. Up. You're like, oh yeah, that's I did. 
I did really want something like that to have. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know? I love it. Oh, so. my goodness. So fun and so hopeful. And I love how you just light up, Ali, when you're talking about this. And, and it just infuses so much hope and so much beauty into this conversation that most of the time can be very judgy, uh, can be have a different energy. And so I love the energy that you bring to this subject and, and the grace and the compassion for everyone involved is just really inspiring. And I loved our conversation. I hope it didn't end ever, but I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've come to the end. And I, I wanted to know if there is one quote or nugget or like, like saying or mantra that you want to share with our audience for any kind of your life, whatever comes comes up to to you in your spirit. Oh my goodness. Um, so much, right? But uh, time, <laughs> time is of the essence. I will say, I'm call I feel called to share right now. It gets better. It gets better for anybody who is listening to this and is maybe in a dark place or even coming out of a dark place is struggling, or maybe they're they they feel so anxious or, or wondering if things really will get better. It gets better. It it oftentimes, and this is what has helped me, is that um, it is darkest before the dawn. And so sometimes right before that huge big breakthrough, it is going to be pitch dark. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sometimes you will, you will be fired from a job. A hurricane is going to hit your home. You're going to be physically, you know, head, head hurting, whatever not feeling like you're knocked out and you're literally one week away from the biggest breakthrough in your life. Mm. Ah, that was gorgeous. Thank you so much, Ali, for being here with us, for sharing such powerful wisdom and so many tangible and practical ways to do what it takes to be sober in our lives and whatever that means for everybody. I hope that everyone and hear me everyone goes to the building the sobriety channel and learn even more from this beautiful brilliant woman thank you so much see you again in the thought leader podcast bye ali bye thank you so much that's it for today's episode of the thought leader podcast Visit our Thought Leader Talks YouTube channel to browse all episodes and show notes and to continue the conversation. We love to hear your feedback, ideas, and success stories. And don't forget to subscribe for more expert information, insights, and inspiration. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Thought Leader Podcast with another relevant conversation you don't want to miss.